Hello, hello, Picard here. And today I'm excited to present a project that I worked very hard on, uh, along with a rundown of how I made them and a small review of the service that I used to print them. So let's get started. Four years in Island Girl is an art book slash autobiography that I put together for the 6th anniversary of my Pokemon webcomic, Leftovers. And if you want to check out my comic or any of the other sites that I mentioned in this video, I'll have links both in the description and at the end of the video. Now you might be wondering why, if this is for my 6th anniversary, is this book called Four Years in Island Girl? And that's because this art book is a continuation of a PDF sketchbook series that I've been putting out on Gumroad for a while now. This book only covers the Duford art of Leftovers, or chapters 6 to 12 if you're familiar, which were all done between late 2015 and early 2020, which is technically about 5 years, but 4 of which were spent specifically on Duford Island. <laughs> Now similar to the PDF sketchbook, this book covers a large amount of concept art and a lot of it is never before seen stuff which I'm really excited to show off. I did a ton of mining through old sketchbooks for the series in general, but this time around I was mining for way more chapters, so my desk was kind of a mess. Now unlike those PDF sketchbooks, I took a much more caring approach this time around. And what I mean is that a lot of those old sketchbooks are a bit garish and since I planned to get this one printed, I sought out a more harmonious balance between images and text in order to make the reading experience better. Plus, since I've been working on my graphic design to get a job anyway, I was really excited to improve my layouts and the way I consider space for this project. And hey, improvement is already baked into leftovers anyway, so why not implement that into its art books too, right? So before I even set out to make this book, I needed to make sure it was even possible. I was dead set on a hardcover landscape format, but from working on another project in the past, I know that getting hardcover books made can be a real pain in the butt and a huge strain on the wallet, to be honest. I researched a bunch of places, but one night I randomly found this place called Mixum while looking at other artists' vids on getting their own zines printed. And thank god I did, because if you're just here for the verdict on whether or not to use Mixum, um, do it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a great service that, in my experience, was really easy to use and they have amazing setup tools. Best part is that they're both affordable and quality, so yeah, I definitely recommend them overall, but like, keep watching for my whole process and experience with them if you want more details. So it was my first time actually making a book like this for prints, but I did quite a bit of research beforehand on things like font sizes, numbers of pages, etc, etc. Thankfully, I myself collect a lot of art books, so I had a bunch to reference. My main ones being Zootopia and Avatar The Last Airbender, the latter of which helped out a ton with adapting the grid method for layout. I even took extensive notes on how many pages each section had to see if there was any rhyme or reason to how each book was broken down. Next, I took all my notes both from other art books and the sorts of things I've included in my previous sketchbooks and started a Google Doc for this book. Here I outlined what I wanted to include content wise, from the types of sections to setting some rules about how deep I wanted to go and when to cap certain things off. Now this is just an outline and it's not the actual content that you find on the pages. Basically it's me figuring out what all I had to pack before picking out a suitcase case to fit it. And that brings me back to mix them in my researching places to get my book printed. I cannot stress enough how important it is to know where you're sending your files so you know how to format your files. Because different places have different bleed requirements and different ways of viewing your books for proofing purposes. And this is a huge reason why I love Mixum so much actually. The way they run their initial print setup for getting quotes was extremely easy to comprehend and most importantly for someone like me who hasn't been on this end of book production before, it's super stress free. You just punch in what you want and voila you can even see the quotes update on the side as you update your order and if you aren't sure what an option means they have little question marks you can hover over for help scroll down and you can see more instructions and then on the left there's the option to download a template now admittedly a lot of places do have templates you can download to show you how to set up your books but Mixums is really accessible and honestly the whole site is super user friendly from my experience, most of which I'll go into later on. But before I move on, I would like to mention that I can do all of this without making an account, which might seem like an odd thing to point out, but I'm sort of no strings attached with services like this and I hate signing up just to try things out at the risk of constantly getting promotional emails because I forgot to uncheck something when I made my account and all that. So I just appreciate being able to do all this up front is all basically. Back to the book itself, after figuring out what I could and couldn't print, the next step was taking the content I'd previously written and organizing it into loose wireframes. For this I used Adobe Illustrator, which I usually used for setting up my previous sketchbooks. 
I broke the wireframe up into sections. The intro section, which included the cover, introduction, and table of contents. The chapter sections, which were all set up the same way for each chapter and included the development part, the process part, key characters, etc, etc. And then finally, the reflection. Now the latter section fixed an issue I originally encountered when trying to figure out how to set up the content of the book. That being, how do I fit the concepts and process parts of each chapter and the many anecdotes from life that happened around that time period in the same section? The result is that I chose key anecdotes from this time period and put them in reflection sections, their own section, following each chapter where they took place. It makes more sense when you see the book, trust me. After making the wireframe, I finally had to pop over into InDesign, the big bad wolf of this whole ordeal. This was my first time using InDesign for anything other than school projects or packaging designs for work and it was pleasant. Extremely pleasant, actually. I mean, I knew InDesign was built for publications, but I didn't know they were built like that. From the auto page numbering feature to the way this program justifies text blocks, working with InDesign made this next part of the process so much smoother than it could have been. Because after recreating the wireframes as best as I could in the program, the next step was actually populating my pages. Thankfully, I had already scanned all of my sketches in, adjusted what needed to be adjusted in Photoshop, and organized them all into folders by chapter. The part that took the longest was populating the text, figuring out what to say while still keeping things short. I didn't want walls of text and then, oh yeah, art! <laughs> so it turned out that a large majority of the story is contained in caption text, a decision I'm super proud of. After all my sections were populated, which took about four to five days I believe, I created an InDesign book. This is a feature that largely helped with page numbering as the numbers are updated as new files are added into the manager. Then I went into the master for each section, set up the style of the numbers, had to comb back through to tweak some things, and exported all of these sections into their own book PDF. I actually have four PDFs total. The content, which I exported in spreads, not individual pages, the front and back covers, and the spine. All in all, putting together this book took a little over two weeks, starting April 10th and wrapping on April 27th, a day after my comics anniversary and my birthday. This included all planning, populating, even the couple days I went to the beach back home to get reference pics for the cover. It was definitely grueling, but absolutely worth it in the end. And after uploading my file to Mixum, checking everything, as well as using this really cool book preview feature, specifically to make sure my page numbers wouldn't get cut off, I sent these bad boys off to print. Now, Mixum has this messaging system that I originally thought was just there for decoration and automatic replies, until somebody actually reached out to me to let me know that the sizing of my spine and cover was off. So I fixed it, sent it off, and on May 5th, my books went into production. Now they said in the portal when I looked that there was supposed to be a six day production turnaround for the books. So once I sent it off on May 5th, I thought that they would send me something by May 11th or so, just letting me know, hey, your stuff is done, um, because the pages do have to dry afterwards. Oh, your stuff is done, they need to dry, and we'll be letting you know when they ship out. Now with that in mind, they were slated to be delivered by the 17th, but after not hearing any word back by the 15th or so, I sent the message just checking in. I was told they would check out things and get back to me, which was comforting. A day or so later, they told me my books had shipped. So I was thinking, okay, they're not shipping out until like the 16th or so. They'll probably get to me by the 20th or something. But nope, <laughs> they actually still managed to get to me by the 18th. A day late, but I'm not complaining as the communication was prompt and I never felt like I was left out in the dark. And well, yeah, now I have them. I didn't have any reviews of hardcover books printed by Mixum to help me in my research, which is why I'm putting up my own review for anyone else who needs help and doesn't want to take the leap of faith that I did. A successful leap, mind you, because I love how they turned out and I can't wait for other people to get their own copies. For technical purposes, here's some information on dimensions and page weight and all that. I got 80 pound pages for the inside and I originally thought it was really thin once I opened up the book but after flipping through some more I realized that it's actually pretty close to regular thickness for art book paper. Still I think I'm going to get the 100 pound paper next time just for a little bit of tear resistance. Speaking of tear, the first copy in the box that I had actually had a small rip on the cover page but the rest of the copies were near flawless. I actually go into even more detail on the box opening stream on my channel, so check that out if you want to see me act like a child on Christmas. For now, that's all I've got today. Thanks to Mixum for the beautiful production, and an even bigger thanks to all of you for actually making it to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful, or at the very least mutually exciting. 
My book, Four Years in Island Girl, will be available for pre-order from May 28th to June 11th, and it's $25 for a hardcover physical copy. There's also a PDF version that's going to be up on Gumroad with no time limit, of course, for $15. Super excited to get these out to everyone, and to those who get a copy, I really hope you enjoy! Again, all links are in the description and at the end of the video. So until next time, Bakara signing out.